everyone, this is Hope, and today I have a book talk to do on a very sad book. So the book that I'm doing a book talk on is We Were Liars by E. Lockhart. Anyway, this book was given to me, oh don't, lovely friend, Nabila, and she read it and she said it was very sad and that there was a really big twist. And then, you know, I looked at the reviews on Goodreads, and there were a lot of people who said that they didn't see the twist coming, and that they were just slammed by it. But I saw it coming. For the first part of this video, I'll briefly describe the plot, and then I'm going to be, um, doing some spoilers. So you might want to leave for that part if you haven't read this yet. Okay, so this... Okay, so this book is about a girl named Cadence, and I love that name, by the way. And she is part of a very wealthy family who owns, like, all these houses on this island um, off of Massachusetts Bay. And she has to deal with all this rich family stuff, like um, inheritance and a bunch of really greedy relatives. And also her greedy mother. So that, you know, it, it's, it doesn't seem like it's horrible, but it still kind of sucks. We don't really understand what the problem with Cadence is and why she's kind of telling this story in such a sad tone. Because something happened in a certain summer that she went to, um her vacation island and she can't remember what happened. So the whole story is kind of flashbacks of certain memories coming back to her. And stuff that's actually happening when she goes back to the island two years after um, the thing happened that she can't remember. Like I said, um, I saw the plot twist coming like I figured out that the thing that was revealed happened except for a certain part of the thing. I didn't see a certain part of it. So that's that's all the non-spoilery stuff I have. So at this point, if you haven't read this book, um, please leave and read it and then come back and watch the spoilery part. Well, I guess there's kind of two parts to the plot twist. The first part being the fact that Cadence and the liars all burned the Claremont house down. I That was the part that I did not see at all. I did not expect them to be arsonists. That was, that was kind of startling, but um, I did figure out that all of the liars were dead um, because that just seemed, I don't know, it just seemed obvious to me. Like, something really tragic happened, and I thought um, originally that when Cadence dove into the ocean, like, they were all kind of collectively committing suicide by jumping into the ocean, and they all died, and she was, like, the only one who survived. Who survived. And um, I thought this because... Like, all of the pressure to inherit all these things. They just, like, hated this world um, that they grew up in. And, um, they like, I knew that this was a really dark book. So I figured, okay, maybe that was what happened. But I, bottom, bottom line is, I knew that all the liars were dead. I really liked how the ending showed that the liars were still there. Kind of as a coping mechanism for Cadence, obviously. Um, I figured that was what they were supposed to be symbolic of because I figured this isn't like a paranormal story so it's obviously just a representation of a coping mechanism. I really liked how this book dealt with racism and how certain people will kind of pretend to not be racist just to save face but in reality um, if you look deeper into their personality, it's kind of obvious that they are racist at heart, um, like Cadence's grandfather. So, yeah, um, a lot of people, um, who don't like this book say that they don't like it because of the romantic aspect of the book, but 
The thing is, that wasn't really the point of the book at all. Cadence and Gat's romance was not something that the book was centered around, you know? It was um, a significant component, but it wasn't um, part of the central meeting, in my opinion. So, you know, of course the romance isn't really well explained. It's just um, kind of a simple summer romance with... that's not simple. Like, it's simple, but it has a deeper meaning to it, if that makes sense. I like the romance. I thought that it was described very beautifully. And, yeah, I just... wow, this book... it didn't make me cry, but it really made me think about, um, how rash certain conditions can cause people to be. Like, all of this pressure from the ants to have the kids inherit these houses and how petty it all seems and just how ridiculous even grown people can be about money and how it's so ironic that you have these young people on the island who normally would be expected to be for material things and for all the money they can get but in reality it's the adults who are just immensely greedy for all these material things and the houses and the money and it's the kids who don't want any part of that. I think this is just, it was a really good book. It, it's a really short read too. Personally, I don't think it was necessarily emotionally impacting. I just think it really made me think. Even though it's a really old, like, idea, money does not buy happiness in any way. It creates more problems at times, especially when people just get too caught up in it and too greedy. I gave this book five stars. I was kind of teetering on maybe giving it four star, four stars, but um, I don't know. I just really liked the ending. And I liked how it didn't, it didn't just end with Cadence letting go of the liars on the shore of the tiny beach, it or wherever they were on the island. I forgot, <laughs> but um, it ended with her, you know, talking to the little kids and still being involved with the family and showing that life goes on despite loss. So yeah, thank you for watching this. Comment down below and tell me what you thought because it was a good book and I liked it. Bye!